Hey guys, in today's episode of Chroma Digitizing, I'm gonna show you how to work with motifs. More specifically, I'm gonna show you how to make your own. So you could do stuff like this. Check it out. This is a complex fill. It's a complex fill with a motif that I created and you can use them for outlines, borders, anything you want. But in this case, I decided to make a complex fill. That one says bride and this one says bridesmaids. So you can put little patches on the brides, you can make little hats out of this, and you can make them out of all sorts of uh, shapes and whatever you want. So let's get to it. First thing we're gonna do is I'm going to create a quarter inch border. I'm gonna use my lines. I'm just gonna click here, drag, and make a line on zero. And I just wanna make a quarter inch uh, template, if you will, right there, just like that. Now I'm gonna use my run tool, my run stitch, and I'm gonna create my motif. Now a motif is something that just repeats over and over and over again. So if we go to, if I just make a simple line right here and I right click and I go to standard and go to motif, you can see all these are multiple different types of motifs. So if I wanted diamonds, I can just click here and apply. And oh, let me select that first, F7, select it, go to motif again, and let's pick the diamonds and apply. So now, no matter how long my line is, it will make these type of motifs. So if I'm making a card, if I'm making an outline of something, I can always do this. I can also do complex fills with this motif inside it. Let's change that. Let's make this one. So that's what a motif is. It's a a little pattern that repeats over and over and over. I did talk about motifs uh, during Deco Summit and we even made a nice card. I'll show it up on the screen. Okay, so let's make a motif. So in this case, we're gonna make the bride motif. So let's get rid of that, delete it. We're gonna use our run stitch. And what I have to do is I have to spell it out. And I'm gonna spell it out in a way that as it writes it, it's just gonna stitch it all out. So we're gonna start just a little bit out of the line and I'm gonna click right here. That's about an eighth of an inch. Uh, yeah, that's a quarter. So when they come together, it's gonna be, let me let me back that up. Let me start here and I'll just do an eighth. Just wanna get the space right. We're gonna do an eighth because I need a start point and an end point. So whenever the motif ends, I need to include a little bit of space before and a little bit of space after so that when they repeat, it's not all stuck together. If it was one design, it doesn't matter, but in this case, I'm gonna write bride. So here we go, we're gonna start there, and I'm just gonna go to the top, and we're just gonna spell out the letter. That's the B, here comes the R, Then we're gonna do the I. Now, since the letters are kind of stuck together, we are just going to make that go down. Back down here. And this is one continuous letter. So we're gonna go here. And we're gonna leave that other eighth of an inch right up there. So there's a reason why I'm doing this. So once I right click, oh, you see that? It's still under motif. Let's go back to standard, F7. Let's go back to standard and click apply. And there we go, now we have bright. So this is, you can do this in Chroma Lux. Inspire doesn't let you do this, which is a really good in, uh, reason to get Lux. So once you have your motif written, you're gonna go to file and you're gonna click uh, on special files and save motif. So here we have the motif, I hit save motif and I'm gonna call it bride. And it's gonna service, it's gonna save it as an MTP file right onto Chroma. So now if I draw that same line and I right click and I go to motif, I can scroll down 
and it's gonna say uh, where is my bride there's my bride and I click it and I click apply oh f7 let's go to motif go all the way down to bride and click apply there it is but notice it's a little small no big deal right now it is at three millimeters let's change it to five and hit apply let's make it uh, 10 millimeters and hit apply and now you can actually start seeing that it says bride okay and it has a starting point and an end point if i were to make a shape let's do a circle an ellipse i can create the ellipse i can F7, we're going to right-click, convert to a complex fill. All right, but under file type, we're going to go to standard. We're going to create motif. And here, again, I'm going to pick bride. So let's go down, pick bride, and click apply. So now it's really, really tight. But let's make the pattern 10 millimeters. So now we can actually read it that it's saying bride. And we're going to click the arrows. And I want my starting point to be at the top and my ending point to be at the bottom, just so that it makes sense so you guys can see what it looks like. There we go. And we're gonna take our lines or direction lines and make it go straight up and down. Okay, and I right click. So now I have the base of my uh, outline. And since we're making these little three inch patches, I'm going to uh, select that again. So F7, right click and utility, and I'm gonna create a border. Once I have that border, I'm gonna right click again and convert to applique. So now it's got everything I need for applique. So if we were to delete this part, let's go to F7, let's delete that. If I were to play it out, notice it's gonna do the base first, and then it's gonna do that. But I have to break up the applique part so that it, so that I can put the, the different sections in. So remember with applique, you need to do your tack down or your placement, then your tack down, then it's gonna do all the embroidery and then it's gonna do the stitch around it. So here, I'm going to click on the border, right click and I wanna break up the path. So once we come over here, you'll notice that this is my first placement stitch. So I want that to be at the very beginning. So we're gonna go all the way to the top. That's the very beginning. So this is my place. Let's get rid of that for a second. So let's go and put that at the very beginning. This is my placement stitch. And let's make that a different color so that it registers and we can swap it out. So that's the first stitch right there. Let's make that go under there. There you go. So this will be the placement stitch followed by the tack down stitch followed by the complex fill of bride, and then we f finish that up with applique. I want the applique to be a different color. This will allow me to kind of just play with it really well. All right, so if we play that out, first thing it's gonna do, it's going to do our placement, tack down. It's gonna do the actual complex fill. And notice that it's starting from the top to the bottom. Let's speed through it. And finally, it's gonna do my border. Now there's one more thing that I wanna do because I'm gonna be making these on Badge Master Film, and on the Badge Master Film, you know you can pop these out. So here we go. I wanna put a name, so let's put a name on it. We're gonna to go to text, and I'm just gonna put here, let's call Janet. She's gonna be the, the lucky bride. Miss Janet, and click apply. Now I can take that F7, and just take it here, and place it right on top. And I can make that a different color as well. By changing the colors, remember we're changing the colors to give us the uh, ability to pick different colors on the screen so that we're not stuck with one. So this way you can make these in all shapes and sizes in all different colors. So there it is. So now we have a complex fill with the motif and it's gonna look great. Now it's just a matter of running it on the machine and that's it. So this tutorial was to show you how to create your own motifs and there are hundreds of them already, but this way you can really specialize it and make it count. So for example, this one, you can make these little patches, you could put it on a hat. You know how the brides, they wear the sash with the bride. So the little stuff on the back says bride and I think that's very unique. You can make this into a coaster for little parties or whatever you want. Let's try to play around with some different motifs. So if you wanna make a motif with shapes, you can just create a shape. Let's uh, do some uh, stars. Let's make some stars. There's my star. 
And again, I'm gonna try to stick to a quarter inch because remember the motifs aren't supposed to be like super big. So this is just a quarter inch. And let's zoom into that really big. Oh, not that way, the other way. There we go. So once you have your star, we're gonna go to uh, F7 so we can select it. We're gonna right click and we're gonna convert that to a run stitch. Remember, motifs are supposed to be nice and whimsical and thin, but you can make them thicker or out of complex fill if you want. The great thing about the motif is that it's just a repeatable pattern. So if we wanted to make all these stars, what we do need to do is to change the start and stop point. So if we look at the start and stop point here, notice that the start and start point is here. So every time it does this star, it's gonna put them one on top of the other. So what I wanna do is I wanna make my star start here and stop here. This is gonna make it so that, you know how when you make those little cutouts and you get all those little little hands, people, the people holding hands together? That's what's gonna happen here. So in this case, my start point is here, my end point is there. So every time I re duplicate this, the stars are gonna end up just kind of holding hands and going across. So now that I have this design here, I'm going to go to File, uh, Special Files, and go to Save Motif. And I'm gonna call this one Star Motif star and save so now let's zoom out a little bit and we can draw our line right click let's click f7 and now we're going to uh, convert that into a star motif and where is my star motif it's all the way towards the end there it is and when we click apply there it is so notice that all the stars and let's make that really big so you can see the cool thing is you can always change the size. So now they're all holding hands and you don't see any connecting lines. Had we left the motif with the starting and stop point at the same time, all of them would be almost right on top of each other and it would kind of negate the whole point of the motif. Now, also with the motif, you can do curves. So if we go to a circle, we can right click, let's do an ellipse and let's draw a circle around all this. We're gonna click F7, right click, convert to run stitch and while it's still selected we're going to go to motif and let's pick that star again and there it is and apply so look at that we have a nice star if you were to make a flag for example and you wanted to have your stars in a line you could just take your line tool and pretty much just draw some lines like this Let's select all of them, F7, and we're gonna convert all of these to motifs. And so instead of you having to put a whole bunch of stars, remember if you're making a small little thing, you can have all 50 stars. The only thing you'd have to do now is just take them and offset the stars so that they are one on top of the other, like that. So you can put all your 50 stars, just stagger them, like so. And there you have it, you can make like an American flag with the staggered stars so that they're slightly offset like that. There you go. So the motif is a, an easy way to create a, rep uh, a repeatable design and you don't have to be, sit there and put them one by one and it will even follow a curve. So even if I were to draw this freehand I can take that F7 and convert that into a motif. And you can make the motif out of anything you want, out of any shape, letters, forms, stars, whatever you want. So if you're not crazy about the ones that are there, uh, you can make your own. So imagine hemming a pair of pants with these stars or with whatever type of custom motif with your person's name, um, anything you want. All right, so that was just a quick look at the different types of motifs you can make. You could pretty much make them out of any type of shape. Just remember to have your start and stop point so that when one ends, the other one begins. So the motifs are really cool and you can customize them and make them however you want. So let's go do some embroidery. For the bride patch, the first thing we're gonna do is lay our placement stitch. So the machine is going to do the first stitch. This is the placement stitch. This, this is going to let us know where to put our little felt pad. And I'm just using a pre-cut three inch felt pad that I got online. And you can use any type of material you want. So now we just place it very carefully, make sure it's within the circle. 
I would recommend you put tape down so that you don't get your fingers. I'm gonna hit start and let it tack the patch down. So now it's gonna do the tack down. And when you're using the Badge Master film, you want to do the border last because that's what's gonna help you pop out the patch. So our tack down stitch is done. Now it's gonna start the motif and you can see it's actually doing a complex fill with the motif. You can make this using a single line, you can make it during the shape, or you can have it do a complex fill of the entire uh, area that you're doing. And it's just a matter of changing the fill type. So the fill type on Chroma, and again, we're using Chroma Lux. Uh, you cannot do the motifs on Inspire. And once it's done with the fill, it's gonna do the name. Remember, the last thing I wanna do is the satin stitch around the edge which is going to allow me to pop the patch out it's super easy and you can make a whole bunch of these in one sheet and at the very end the satin stitch will help you pop the patch out almost done and here we go we have our nice satin border and if you make your satin border thick enough it's going to cover any type of imperfections around the patch and you can even do a mired edge as well to give it a really good uh, patch look. Here I just decided to keep it nice and simple. And once that's done, we're gonna take it off the machine and let's go over to our table and look how easy this pops out. Just push it and it'll come right out. And here are just some examples of one. That one is the bridesmaid patch. And again, you can change the colors, do them however you like. And here's the bride patch. And you can put these on hats, you can put them on sashes, anything you want. If you like the videos that we're making here at Rakoma, make sure you like, share, and subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you know when we're coming out with the next great content. If you have any tips or tricks that you'd like to share with us, make sure you leave them in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on how to create your own custom motif. Now get out there and go digitize.